Collins Dictionary describes emotion as a feeling such as happiness, love, fear, anger, or hatred, which can be caused by the situation that you are in or the people you are with. In this case, emotion will be caused by the product or service that a user is interacting with. So, to define emotional design, it is the concept of how to create designs that evoke emotions which result in positive user experiences. Scholars in this area, Trevor Van Gorp and Eddie Adams, describe why emotion is so important in the design of a product or service. The key reasons that they highlight are the fact that emotion dominates decision making for people, emotion is experience, all design is emotional design, emotion affects attention and memory, and also that emotion creates meaning, personality, and creates relationships. Given these key points, emotional design is very valuable to the performance and success of your product. If your product can't meet the emotional expectations of your users, they likely will not be returning for future use. However, if you can create an emotional bond and connection with your users, there may be a chance that you meet or exceed the emotional expectations that your users have. This means that they may be returning for future use as well as spreading the word about your product in a positive manner. In order to create this emotional bond between a user and a product, designers should look to use emotional design to create these positive emotions. Happiness, joy, excitedness, cheerfulness, delight, as well as several other positive emotions. The inability to create positive emotion in your users likely results in negative emotion, which can be in the form of frustration, anger, anxiety, confusion, and much more. There are specific emotional design practices that can be used to improve the emotional response felt by users. They are memorable personality or persona, interaction with character, color or contrast, personalization, reward or surprise features, storytelling, and the use of soft deliveries. The first emotional design practice that designers can do is to create a memorable personality or persona for their product or service. This can be in the form of a mascot, a theme, or even a face. This gives your product or service a visual representation that users can associate their feelings and memories with. Smokey the Bear is a friendly example of this. The second practice that can be done is interaction with character. This expands on the tone and voice of the personality or persona that you've created for your product or service. For example, if your product wants to come off as playful, it might say, you're back, I'm so excited, did you miss me too? When a user returns for future use. This gives your product human-like attributes that the user can develop an emotional bond with. All other mediums of communication, such as video, sound, or animation, should remain consistent in this tone and voice. The third practice is the use of color and contrast. Your product or interface should have colors that complement each other. Any elements that are included should have colors that have specific meaning associated with them. Poor use of color and contrast can result in frustration, confusion, or just an overall displeasure with the visual appeal of your product. The fourth practice is personalization. Allowing your users to customize their experience gives them a sense of control and makes them feel as if they're cared for. If your service were to offer a suggestion that is unique to that user, this is one way that you'd be creating an emotional bond between your product and that user. A fifth strategy is the use of reward or surprise features. The same way that social media platforms use likes or retweets as positive reinforcements for their users, your products should look to create that same excitement or emotional investment from your users. Storytelling is another method for creating emotional connection between your users and your service. A story can bring out relatable experiences or empathy from a user that allows them to not only value your service, but what your service stands for at a personal level. The final emotional design practice is soft delivery. This is the use of a polite tone or lighthearted response to respond and acknowledge a mistake that your service or product may have made. If an error is made by your service or product, compensation should be offered. This can be in the form of a funny video, a meme, or even a discount of some sort. This is done to reduce any frustration or other negative emotions in your users, as well as create empathy for the error that you've made. This will also alert your users that your team is aware of the problem and working to solve it as soon as possible. These simple design practices are a great way for engineers to tell their users that they care about them and that they can connect with them at an emotional level. Have a great day and thank you for watching.